So I've done a video before about history taking in obstetrics and I said I was going to do a video in tailing history taking in gynecology but I never really did it. So here's a quick video on history taking in gynecology. Grab a piece of paper and let's go. Hello and welcome to MK's Medical Review Series. My name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. This is a series on my YouTube channel where we look at medical topics in depth. Today we're going to be looking at history taking in gynecology. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification icon to be receiving notifications of such amazing content every time I post. Drop a like and drop a comment. I will leave a, the video tagged at the end of this lecture which I covered on history taking and obstetrics in case you missed that particular video. So let's jump right in. So remember that gynecology is going to be this branch of medicine that's going to be dealing with pretty much the female reproductive system and problems that are affecting the female reproductive system at various different stages of development. So it's not only just limited to the women that are of reproductive age, but it's also going to be involving women before reproductive age and women after the reproductive age as well as those in between. Remember that a good history is going to be giving you 90% of the information that you need to reach a diagnosis. It's going to help guide what type of examinations you're going to do in order to arrive at a diagnosis and also to help you give an understanding of what type of investigations you're going to carry out to reach a diagnosis. So a thorough history is very important for you to reach a good diagnosis and have a good differential diagnosis. Remember that even though history taking may not have uh, been elicited in a specific order, there is a standard method of presentation in, in order for you to avoid any omission of inf important information, in order for you to avoid you actually missing out certain important aspects in this woman's gynecological history. So remember that gynecology is just pretty much like a branch of medicine, but it's just dealing with women. So the summary of the things that we're going to be looking at include the demographics, the presenting complaints, the history of presenting complaints, the review of system, the gyno menstrual history, the past reproductive history, the past medical and surgical history, the drug history, the family history, and the social economic history. Remember that before beginning any session of history taking, there are preliminaries that have to be done. Number one, you have to ensure that there is privacy and confidentiality of wherever you are taking that history. You don't want to take it in the open public with a lot of people that are there. Ask the patient if the, she is comfortable with everyone who's around. If she's not, then you can ask those people to leave the room. Number two, you must ensure that you greet the patient and introduce yourself. You should state your role and what you're going to do because the, when patients come into the hospital, they are apprehensive and everyone is sick and they don't really like going to the hospital. So make sure you greet the patient, introduce yourself, and of course, gain consent. Ask this patient if it's okay to actually continue to take the history in this particular patient. So the first thing that you're going to be confirming are the patient's demographics. Of course, the name of the patient, quite important because different people can have similar names and this could be disastrous, especially if you take the wrong person to theater. The age is obviously important because there are different types of age-related pathologies, even in gynecology, for example, in terms of cancers. Marital status, if they're married or single, occupation of the patient, the gravidity and parity, if they are currently pregnant, you're going to include the gravidity. If they're not pregnant, you're just going to be mentioning the parity of the patient. If they are pregnant, you also should include the gestational age, whether you're calculating it by last menstrual period or you're calculating it by the early trimester ultrasound. And then you should also state whether this is a clinic referral or self-referral. If it's a clinic referral, where is she being referred from? What is she be re being referred for and what was done for this particular patient. The next section is of course the presenting complaint where you're going to be listing down the symptoms that the patient is telling you in chronological order and of course including the duration. There's a way in which we note the duration x over 7 to indicate days, for example 1 over 7 will indicate one day, x over 52 to indicate weeks, for example 3 over 52 to indicate three weeks, 
x over 12 to indicate months, for example, 2 over 12 to indicate 12 months, and then of course the years, you can write them as 1 year, 2 years, so on and so forth. Some common presenting symptoms that patients are going to come in with include things like abnormal vaginal bleeding, which could be bleeding between periods, bleeding after menopause, heavy or prolonged or even irregular bleeding. It could sometimes even be bleeding in the early trimester, because remember that gynecology is going to include even the pregnant women before 28 weeks of pregnancy, in our case, which is the age of viability. Then the, they may also present with frequent and urgent need to urinate or a burning sensation during urination, pain or even pressure in the pelvis that may differ from menstrual cramping. They may present to you with pain because of menstrual cramping. There may be itching, burning, swelling, redness, soreness in the vaginal area. They may have sores or lumps or growths in the vaginal area. They may have vaginal discharge. And remember that this vaginal discharge with an unpleasant or unusual odor or sometimes of an unusual color. They may sometimes report with an increase in vaginal discharge. Then you come to the history of presenting complaint, which is going to be tackling the details of the presenting complaint. Remember, this is similar to just like with medicine uh, that you learn in other, or history taking in other departments. You're just going to be focusing on the story relating to the symptom that has been presented to you. For example, if a woman presents to you with vaginal bleeding, what important questions are you going to ask? You're interested to know when this bleeding happens. Is it after intercourse? Is it during in between periods? Is it during periods? Is it in pregnancy? How many pads has this patient changed? What is the color of the blood? Is there any associated discharge? Is there any associated abdominal pains? Are there any associated symptoms like Symptoms that may indicate that this patient is hypovolemic, symptoms of dizziness, symptoms of palpitations, so on and so forth. So this, much, this bit here is pretty much focusing on the details. If it's in relation to pain, for example, low abdominal pain, you should follow the Socrates, the site, the onset, the character, the radiation, alleviating factors, timing onset, exacerbating factors, as well as associated symptoms. Then the review of system just simply tackles the other possible symptoms in other systems, which is just a quick review of questions that the patient may not think may be related to the particular condition, but may actually be related to the particular condition. In the central nervous system, it includes things like headache, visual changes, seizures, fainting, lightheadedness. In the cardiovascular system, it includes dyspnea, palpitations, orthopnea, paroxysmal nocturnal dyspnea, easy fatigability, and ankle swelling. In the respiratory system, it includes chest pain, cough, which may or may not be productive. It may sometimes even produce uh, blood, which is known as hemoptysis. In the gastrointestinal system, nausea, or vomiting, diarrhea, or constipation, abdominal pain, or even changes in the bowel patterns. Genitourinary system, including the color of the urine, any dysuria, any polyuria, or oliguria, any hematuria, any vaginal discharge, or any vaginal bleeding. Of course, if the patient came in with these symptoms, in the, in the history of presenting complaints, you don't have to repeat them in the review of systems. Then you also have the musculoskeletal system and the skin, which asks for joint pains, um, any back pains, any swellings, any skin rash. In terms of the menstrual and the gain history, this is focusing pretty much on the menstrual history and the gynecological history of the patient. You want to ask about history of the details of the menstrual cycle. First of all, you must think, is this an age-appropriate question? What do I mean? You ask a nine-year-old, or maybe maybe nine-year-old, maybe a stretch, a six-year-old, you ask the mother if the periods are regular. That doesn't make sense because this child has yet reached menarche, has yet to begin the periods. Again, if you ask someone maybe who's 68 or maybe someone who's 70, when my last period was, they've already reached menopause, so it's not really appropriate. So you should actually ask the date when they achieved menarche which is the onset of these regular menstrual periods and the date when they stopped, which is the menopause. And you should judge it based on the age of the patient. And of course, if they are of the reproductive age and they are still menstruating, ask whether the cycles are regular and are occurring each month with normal duration and normal amount of blood flow. How many pads do they change in each of the menses or whether it's irregular? How is the pattern like? So you should ask about the first day of the last menstrual period, the last normal menstrual period. If it's different, ask for any use of contraception. If they do use contraception, what kind of contraception are they using and how long have they used it? You should ask about whether they have done any cervical cancer screening in the past, when it was done and the result of the cervical cancer screening, as well as the breast cancer screening. The age at which they had their sexual 
debut, the first time they had sexual intercourse, whether it was protected or unprotected, the number of sexual partners that they are having, and whether they practice protected sexual intercourse or unprotected sexual intercourse. Then in terms of the past reproductive history, this is just simply the past pregnancies that they have had. So the number of viable pregnancies they've had past the age of viability, which is 28 weeks and above, this is going to account for parity. Remember, if you have twins, triplets, um, quadruplets, those are all going to be counting as one because you only get pregnant once. And of course, you're going to carry this pregnancy past the age of viability once. Then the total number of pregnancies, again, twins are going to be counted as gravida one. I explain these terms in another video. And these are going to include abortions and ectopic pregnancies. You should also list the number of infants that are currently alive, the mode of delivery, the the state at birth, whether the child was healthy or they are alive or they are dead. Of course, the age, uh, rather the age of, at birth, whether they were born at term or preterm, as well as the birth weight. In terms of the past medical history and surgical history, you should ask for a history of previous similar illness, whether they have a history of previous admissions or any blood transfusions. If they do have a history of previous admissions, what were they admitted for? And what was done for this patient? Do they have any history of any chronic illnesses like diabetes, epilepsy, asthma, tuberculosis, hypertension, and HIV? We can use the mnemonic deaths to help you remember D for diabetes, E for epilepsy, A for asthma, T for TB, H for hypertension and HIV. Then you should also ask for any history of any surgical procedures, like biomectomies that were done, any cesarean sections, when were they done, what was the indication, how long did they stay in the hospital, any other surgical procedures like a dilatation and curatage or dilatation and evacuation that was done. Then the drug history, including allergies, any medications that were taken, including herbal medications. These drugs must include the name of the drug, the route of administration, and the frequency. Make sure that you actually see the packaging and you can actually see what type of drug they are taking. In terms of the family history, you want to ask for any history of similar illness in the family, but of course this must be appropriately asked. And then the number of siblings in the family, any history of breast cancer or cervical cancer in the family, and the history of any chronic illnesses like diabetes, epilepsy, asthma, TB, and hypertension, as well as sickle cell. Last but not least is the socioeconomic history where you want to ask about the accommodation, where do they stay, how many rooms, what is their source of water, what is their source of their toilet. Of course, this may have very little bearing in terms of gynecological conditions. You should also ask about the um, family at home, how many people are at home, the financial support that is at home, whether they have traveled recently outside the confines of their environment or outside the country or outside the city. Ask for any history of alcohol and smoking in this particular patient. The other details, things like religion, things like occupation, as well as their marital status, remember we did ask those in the demographics. Some people actually tend to include them in the socioeconomic history. Last but not least, you're going to offer a short summary. Remember, someone once said that a good summary is like a miniskirt. It is short, yet covering all the essential parts. So here you're going to have a short summary of the presenting symptoms, both the positives and the negatives, before you actually go to examination. And this should be very good because it's helping you prepare to write those summaries. Every time you review a patient, you want to write a summary of the history, then of course proceed to the examination. And once you have a good summary and a good history, you should be able to offer an impression and differentials based on your history. So those are the important things you really need to know in terms of the gynecological history and how to take it. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe to the channel? Hit the bell notification icon to be receiving such amazing content every time I post. To Zambia and beyond, my name is Dr. Moses Kazevu. Until next time, bye-bye.